Hey, this is the Gun Guy on Gun Guy TV. I got a question from somebody about concealed carry permits, and that came up just the other day. So, and specifically about concealed carry permits in California and how you get them. Uh, easier said than done, I gotta tell you. But uh, let me see if I can lay it out for you because I do have a permit from the San Diego County Sheriff's Department uh, for California, and I do teach the California Concealed Carry Permit course for both the San Diego uh, County Sheriff's Department and the Orange County Sheriff's Department, which is up, if you're not familiar with California, Orange County is up in the Los Angeles, uh, California area. So there's uh, Los Angeles County right next to that is Orange County. So it's an interesting thing about Sandy, about California rather, is that California, the concealed carry permits here, unlike many other states, are not issued by the state of California. They're, they're issued by the local law enforcement authority, uh, whoever that may be. And in the majority of cases, that's the local sheriff uh, where you live. And the sheriffs are county by county. Obviously, the county sheriffs are elected officials in each county. And what California law does is it says to the local law enforcement official, you may issue, and that's the words that are used, that the local law enforcement official may issue a permit to carry a concealed revolver or pistol um, to a resident of the county who is a law-abiding uh, legal resident of the county who's over 21, 21 years of age or older, and it's not somehow or other a prohibited person. So you can't be obviously a convicted felon, or you can't be uh, uh, you know, a person who has been adjudicated by a judge to be mentally incompetent or mentally insane. You can't be a mental patient, those kind of things. Um, so an adjudicated for a person that legally cannot possess firearms, obviously, uh, cannot legally get a con uh, concealed carry permit because can't possess firearms in the United States. So those people would be exclu excluded. And then the, 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 the thing that gives everybody, uh, you know, the vapors here in California, including me, is the fact that the statute reads as a, as a May issue statement and gives this little clause called good cause. The sheriff can determine... Uh, has to determine whether the person that they're issuing it a permit to has good cause for the issuance of the permit. Well, the problem with that, and that would be all fine and dandy if good cause was actually defined by the state of California in the state statute, but it isn't. Good cause is just left open for the individual judge, or I'm sorry, not, uh, not judge, individual sheriff, to determine in the sheriff's mind what they consider good cause to be. So if you're the sheriff, you get to decide whether good cause means uh, gee, you want one for self-defense, and I consider personal defense and personal security good cause, so I'll issue you a permit. That's pretty much shall issue. Or, <clears throat> good cause to me is, uh, you happen to be a person who has a lot of money and has donated to my campaign, <laughs> and uh, then I'll issue you one. Or, you happen to be a family member of mine or a friend or a buddy of mine, I'll issue you one, but nobody else other than that has good cause. Or, good cause could be, you happen to be a... Uh, a uh, uh, a buddy of a police officer here in, in the in the county, and because that cop recommended you, uh, then I'll issue it. Well, that's kind of the way Imperial County is. You have to be recommended by an active duty Imperial County police officer before you can receive a permit. So if you're not friends with a police officer in Imperial County, you're not going to get a permit from the Imperial County Sheriff's Department. Or it could be like San Diego County and Orange County, the ones that I teach uh, for. Those uh, will issue a permit for business purposes. Now that's provided that you have a real business, and uh, you can't. So don't you know? I know it's a great idea, but don't rush out there and and start a you know a uh, you know a little business out of your post office box and then pretend that you have a business so that you can get a permit. It's not, a, it's not going to work because they do some exhaustive investigation. Uh, and B, if you got the permit, never used it, then you would have gotten the permit under false pretenses. And that's probably not going to go well uh, when it comes time for criminal and civil actions to be taken. So I would strongly suggest that you not do that. I would not go down the road of getting, uh, of getting a permit under false pretenses. Uh, so then we get back to <clears throat> what is a business? Well, a business is any business entity that has you know, got a business uh, license and you're actually conducting business and then you have to show that your business in some fashion or other puts you in greater jeopardy in the sheriff's mind than the average person uh, you I don't know some examples might be 
that you uh, transport a lot of valuables or you go to horrible neighborhoods in bad parts of town or you go to uh, bad neighborhoods at night or in, the, in my case I'm a California private patrol operator we own a security company that provides explosives detection narcotics detection and a few other things and then we own a training company uh, that uh, trains people for firearms, so we transport firearms back and forth to the range. So in the sheriff's mind, they go, well, gee, you're transporting a lot of firearms around or ammunition around, and you're, you own a security company, you're already licensed to carry firearms by the state exposed, so they issued a permit. And that's basically how it works in the state of California. Absent that, <clears throat> if you're in San Diego County where I am or Orange County, uh, if you don't have a business and some business case that you can build and, and explain that says, yes, I need a permit for my business, the chance of you getting one are pretty darn slim. You'd have to be a person who had been threatened and had documented threats against your life, a whole bunch of them, um, and, you, and police reports and everything else. And then they, Or you, you've got somebody with a temporary restraining order because they've been threatening your life. And then the sheriff may issue you a permit for that, but they're going to be limited. And uh, once that threat is perceived to be gone, their permit's going to go away. For the business ones, it's interesting because they limit those by putting some tag on it. Mine says, for example, for for uh, business-related purposes, uh, KBTN Inc., Ronin SI, Practical Defense Systems, or whatever. So I can only carry the gun for business-related purposes. Well, gee, given what I do, I asked the Sheriff's Department, I licensing division at the time, I said, well, what does that limit me from? Because, I mean, how does that limit me? I, I you know, This is what I do for a living. And the clerk said to me, and I quote, it doesn't because you're on call all the time. So I'm not sure what the point of putting the limit on there is other than trying to cover the sheriff's fanny because that way they could say, well, you know, we told him only for business purposes and he was driving down the street and that's not necessarily, you know, which is of course silly. But nevertheless, uh, that's the kind of cockamamie screwball stuff that they do with these things. But anyway, from the standpoint of, uh, of cases in court. I get the question about the Peruta case a lot. Here's where that stands at the moment. Now, at the moment of this recording anyway, here in, uh, at the end of May in 2015. Ed Peruta sued the Sheriff's Department in San Diego because he didn't get a permit, and they denied him for cockamamie screwball reasons. Anyway, he. long story short, he lost, and the Sheriff's Department won in the local courthouse here. And then after that uh, happened, then he appealed it. Well, in between the time that he lost and the appeal, the California uh, legislature made open carry in California completely and utterly illegal, except in the instance of a security officer in uniform with a state permit or a or private investigator with a state permit or, you know, if you're licensed like that. And the reasoning the lower court had for a finding in favor of the sheriff in the first place was that the sheriff's refusal to issue uh, concealed carry permits for lawful self-defense was not a violation of the Second Amendment. It did not burden the Second Amendment because in the state of California, an individual who wanted to carry a gun for self-defense could do so openly by, through the open carry law. Well, the open carry law in California was absolutely ridiculous anyway. It would allow you to carry a fully unloaded, let me say that again, unloaded gun openly. Now, what good is an unloaded gun? My father, a deputy sheriff for more years than I can count, used to say that a gun without any ammunition is just a club and not a very good one. You'd be better off with a club that's meant to be a club. But you could carry an unloaded gun. Now, you could have ammunition in your pocket or on your side or something, but not in the gun. Okay, so that was the method, that was the thinking of the judge at the time is, well, you could quickly load your gun really quick. Well, no, I've had knives pulled on me and people shoot at me and all kinds of other things. And I can tell you that when you need the gun, you need the gun like right now. You don't have time to load it and fiddle with it. So that was absurd. And, and uh, of course, uh, later on, the legislature completely banned open carry. So the <clears throat> Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals came back with a three-judge panel. Mind you, I should stop here and say that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is the most liberal court of appeals that I'm aware of in the United States, and they are the, probably the most often overturned by the by the uh, Supreme Court as a result. But there are only a handful, two, I think, conservative justices on the whole stinking appeals court, and, and magically, those two justices happen to be on the three-judge panel. So... Uh, that three-judge panel found in favor of Peruta and wrote a decision that really mirrors, as far as I can read it, I'm not an attorney, but I did read it, 
Um, it mirrors the Heller and McDonald decisions that were, uh, that were found by the Supreme Court uh, and really looks a lot like both of them and uses a lot of the, the same logic. So what was interesting about that is it looks very much the same and the three judge panel essentially said that San Diego's approach to issuing a concealed carry permit was completely and utterly unconstitutional and it was a burden on the Second Amendment and that San Diego and any other sheriff in the state of California had to issue permits on for self-defense. Self-defense was in and itself good cause. Well, the sheriff decided he wasn't going to appeal it, but Camilla Harris, our wonderful attorney general in the state of California, <laughs> sorry, I said Camilla Harris and I had to spit it out of my mouth. <laughs> there it goes again. Uh, she decided that she wanted to try to you know, intervene, and so she tried to intervene. Well, she wasn't allowed to intervene because the court, the case had nothing to do with the state of California. It had only something to do with San Diego, but some of the justices, at least one anyway, on, this, on the Ninth Circuit, decided they wanted to hear the case on bonk. So the, my understanding is that the three-judge panel decision has been thrown out, and now the court is going to hear it with an 11-judge panel. Well, the vast majority of those judges are liberal, anti-gun uh, justices. So um, my suspicion, and it's working its way through the process right now, but my suspicion is that uh, what's going to end up happening is the court is going to overturn the Peruta case, in which case uh, Mr. Peruta and the National Rifle Association and all the other folks associated with it, and by the way, if you think the National Rifle Association doesn't do anything in the state of California, they've spent a bloody fortune on that case and others, which are now kind of linked together, but I can darn near guarantee you that the NRA at all uh, with Mr. Peruta are going to appeal it to the Supreme Court. If uh, if they're found, if the uh, decision by the three judge panel is overturned, and that should probably happen, uh, my understanding is fairly quickly. Now, how soon it would the Supreme Court would hear it, if the or even if the Supreme Court would hear it, I couldn't tell you. But the eleven judge panel should be done with the case you know, in a reasonable period of time, you know, a year or less, would be my guess. Um, if by some crazy magical uh, gift from the Lord. The uh, Ninth Circuit upholds the previous three-judge panel decision. Then it's widely felt that the uh, state of California, which is, would try to intervene, would try to appeal it to the uh, to the Supreme Court, and it would end up there anyhow. So, I think most folks who talk about this, and I talk with a lot of people about this, are of the opinion this thing is eventually going to end up with the Supreme Court. Probably nothing's going to change uh, in California until such time as the Supreme Court hears it or doesn't hear it. If they don't hear it, we're stuck with whatever decision the Ninth Circuit comes up with until they hear another case. If they do hear it, then ultimately it'll be decided by the Supreme Court as to whether you, a law-abiding citizen, and I, have a Second Amendment right to bear arms that is not dependent upon the whim of some sheriff somewhere. And at this point, I can tell you that uh, in California, we apparently do not. Anyway, that's the little short primer on concealed carry in the state of California. Now, if you happen to be in Kern County or Nevada County, uh, you're in a shall issue county. Those sheriffs just issue them. Go down to your sheriff and apply. If you happen to be in, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area or Sacramento area or, you know, San Diego or Los Angeles or Orange County or whatever, you're going to have a tough time. If you happen to be in Riverside, I don't know for a fact, but my understanding is the Riverside Sheriff uh, issues permits and does so uh, readily for self-defense. If that's the case, then uh, if you're in Riverside, I'd go down and apply with your local sheriff. Because as the law is written right now, it's all up to the sheriff. So if your sheriff will issue, then you're good. If the sheriff won't issue, then you're not. And then you're, you're kind of a prisoner of the uh, political uh, uh, whim or Second Amendment whim, if you will, of your local sheriff who is an elected official. It's a lot easier to replace a sheriff than it is to rework an entire legislature like the liberal legislature we have in the state of California. Uh, it's not easy to remove a sitting sheriff. I'm not saying that. I mean, it's not easy to do. And um, just be aware of the fact that you're going to have to work at it. But you can replace a sheriff. And if you get an opportunity to replace your sheriff, if your sheriff is a, a non-issue kind of sheriff like in L.A. County uh, or San Diego or Orange County or something, replace your sheriff if you possibly can. If you're in a county where the sheriff is willing to issue them and has been a good sheriff in that way and in others, hey, campaign to help that sheriff stay in office. Uh, the other thing you can do is obviously vote differently when it comes time for the California legislature, California governor, and so on. 
and that's your state assembly uh, person and your state senate uh, senator. Uh, and then, you know, join some organizations that will help you. In California, CalGuns is a great organization. Uh, the Gun Owners of California is another. Uh, certainly, my number one would be join the National Rifle Association. They're the biggest, no matter what you may think about them, good or bad. They're the largest gun rights organization in the nation. They are easily the most powerful, and they are spending a fortune in California trying to liberate the, the uh, citizens of California from these draconian uh, gun laws. So you can join the NRA if you want to by just going down to the description underneath the video. There's a link there for you. If you join it there, we'll, you know, it, it'll save you 10 bucks. It, uh, I think it's $25 to, at least at the recording of this video, to join the NRA for a year because it, it'll save you $10. Uh, that's less than a box of, a, of, of rifle ammunition or a box of pistol ammunition to join an organization for a year and add your voice to ours and hopefully get this changed so that if you want to carry a firearm for self-defense, your, your right to do so will be restored in this state. That's my hope. And uh, one of the things that the NRA is working very hard to do, as is the California Rifle and Pistol Association, you should join them too if, you, if, you, if you're up to it, because that is the National Rifle Association's California affiliate. And a lot of work is done through them. So there's some things that you can do to change it. Uh, I do every, you know, this Saturday I'm teaching a concealed carry course, and every Saturday, every time I teach one, I get this same question, and every time I teach one, I have people will stick around after the class and complain about the situation, and you know what? I get it. I feel the same way. If you're unhappy about this kind of stuff, hey, I'm with you. I'm, you know, count me in. I'm totally with you, but we have to take action to change it, and a lot of folks are wanting to grouse about it. I, it's, maybe that's not you, but a lot of folks want to grouse about it, but what they're not willing to do is take the simple action of just joining the NRA. So I urge you to do that. Listen, thanks so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I apologize for the for the long-winded answer, but this is a vlog after all and I'm, you know, kind of driving around while I'm doing it. Uh, please like wherever the, you know, like thing is and subscribe. I don't know where the button is. I think it's over here or over here or down there or something. Um, Share it on share it Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and so on. This, by the way, is one of the questions I get the most. So if you have friends that are gun people, share this so that they can get the answer too. Uh, and uh, just so that you know, I'm really grateful that you watch the videos. And the more videos you watch, the more videos we are able to produce. Thank you again. Have a great week.